Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Baladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! Today, it's gonna be a mono battle! Sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. I haven't cast a mono battle in some time, so somebody sent me one a couple of weeks ago and I figured, hey, I'm going to cast it because I know that's what the people want. It's been a while, guys. And mono battles are a lot of fun. I need to play one, I feel like. All right, so those of you who don't know what Mono Battle is, it's a 4v4 where each player can only build one unit. It was inspired by an idea that Husky StarCraft had, so that tells you how long ago Mono Battle was conceived and brought up here, and people are still playing it, so it's a good idea. We've got a Casa, we got Casa Amigos, which is like House of Friends in an interesting way. Whoa, hold on, we're there. We made it, guys. Uh, all right, so we're going to go Team North. Here on... God, I don't remember the name of this map. I can't remember what it is. It's, it's just like a state something. I've played on it before. Anyway, top side here, we got a Terran player named Osiri Star. We have a Zerg player named Casa Amigos, which is like House of Friends. We've got an orange Protoss player, Zelia, And a Protoss player named Sulfurus, which is a World of Warcraft reference. Hand of Sulfurus, a weapon you get from Ragnaros back in original vanilla World of Warcraft in 2004, man. Actually, I don't think they introduced Molten Core until like 2005. Maybe six. Anyway, Team South is going to be Xeno Rage. We got ourselves Fire Eye. On the other end, we have a purple Terran player, Marine. And another Terran player, Niravro. Oh, Xeno Race left the game. No! No! Why? Xeno Race. Uh, this is the worst part of casting team games, as you don't know. Sometimes it's going to turn into like a 3v2, and then it's a raffle stomp, and that's bummer. So Team Red here, Team South, is in a lot of trouble. One thing you can do is just turn them into a mule. Basically, they're just feeding you the entire time. So you saturate their gases, you make sure they're fully up. Make them expand, so they've got two base Protoss just fully pulling in minerals and gas the whole time. That can work out for you, but you still are down in army supply, and if you're really good, you can actually make them tech up and make units and stuff. So Xeno Race apparently is going to cannon rush. Somebody's controlling Xeno. Never mind, we changed our mind here. Just going to go back to work. Forget it. We don't need any of your cannons. The good thing about this map is you have this one area you need to wall off, and that's it. Actually, I don't think this is a state. What is this map called? I don't know, but it's really nice if you're not a Zerg player because you can wall off here. And everybody has access to at least two bases, and some of you get three. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight bases there. So not everybody, actually, everyone gets two is what we're looking at right now. Uh, and then this one's pretty available, but you have to wall off here and wall off here if you're going to do that. So I don't know, it's rough. It's a rough play. Uh, we are proxying double gateways here for, sulf for Sulfurus, though. But that's why we're throwing up a million cannons and you're walling. So that's the benefit of doing a 4v4 on this map is you can keep everybody safe by walling up right here, at least for a while. At least until air units show up, and at least until Nidus worms start popping, because I feel like that might be where we're going for Casa Amigos and his very quick lair and his very quick second gas. It's entirely possible it's Mutalisks as well, so we'll keep an eye on what the one Zerg player in the whole world is doing today. Which is hilarious. Anyway, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Falcon Paladin. I cast StarCraft 2 five or six times a week. I'm casting Brudor about five times a week. It's a very busy experience for me. It's very StarCraft. I hold down a full-time job, and I've got some kids I take care of. So, it's, uh, it's a busy experience. Hit that like button if you're excited for the mono battle, if you're here. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. About 60% of my viewers come from people who are just looking for StarCraft and don't subscribe. But if you're worried, there's not going to be a ton of new content. There's a ton of new content all the time. I don't have 50,000 subs because I just posted a couple of cool things and they went viral. This has been the work of a ton of five years, of five years of committed work here for you. Casting StarCraft. And if I didn't love it, I'd stop doing it. This looks like Lurker Nidus to me. Just Hydra Nidus, I guess. I could be Lurkers, but I think Hydra Nidus would accomplish a lot, too. Like, Xeno Race has nothing defending right now. Um, uh, No one really has much defending their bases at all. They're really feeling very safe with this wall at the front, which is entirely fair. Phoenix from Fire Eyes like, ah, what is this action? You have a bunch of zealots outside my front door. 
So furious, you scamp. The zealots are like, well, the longer we wait, the worse this is going to be for us. We'll wait for another round, another warping of zealots, and then we'll go. But that's a lot of cannons. It's a pretty decent Terran wall there. I mean, supply depots are fairly flimsy. Are the zealots going to go? I think they're going to go for it. The phoenix are going to start lifting, though, when you get in range of those cannons. They're just lifting and killing you now. Sure, why not? And the zealots are like, you know, I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> Even the teeniest and tiniest of bits. Casamigos getting a spore. Building hydralists. He's got his Nidus network. Where's his Nidus worm going to come up? He didn't get overlord speed. Like, if you're going to rush for Nidus, get overlord speed while you're waiting for the lair to come up. Um, obviously on your other hatchery because you can't do it at the same time you're making a lair. But yeah, get your overlords out. Um, get the speed running and have a good day. Ooh, Marines making Thors. We've talked about this a lot. Thors get better and better the lower on the ladder you go. So if you're talking professional level, Thors kind of get chewed up and eaten by professional Zergs. But uh, like a diamond or platinum, suddenly Mass Thor is really hard to deal with. If you're a Zerg player especially, but even Terran players have a hard time with it. Enemy just Mass Thor. Immortals exist for Protoss though. So going Mass Thor against Protoss, as long as they know what they're doing, seems pretty dumb. It is a Lurker Den though. So who's... Hmm. Where are his Hydras? Are they just in the... Nope. He has one Hydralisk. I don't know. I don't know what Casamigos is doing here. He is... Is he floating money? Kind of. He has a lot of gas, which is nice. Production tab is back. High sec auto tracking coming in for Team Red. I like that Team Red just didn't immediately leave. That is such a wonderful thing. Do you... Sulfurus doesn't have any defense back home. You know there's Phoenix out. This is one of the things that drives me the most crazy in team games. Like... It's one thing if the whole team gets caught by a surprise. We didn't scout well enough. Phoenix showed up, murdered us, fine. But you know there's Phoenix out. They were killing your zealots four minutes ago. How do you not have cannons? I like how the Phoenix left, too. I guess they're too low on energy to do much else. <laughs> Which is a bonus. It is a bonus for Sulfurus. It allows them to get some cannons up. But seriously, like I've had games where I get harassed by Banshees. And I lose like 10 drones and I barely drive them off and they go away. And then they show up at my teammate's base and they don't have any anti-air. It's like, what? What did you think would happen? There's banshees out. Get a turret up. Get a cannon up. Get a spore. Anything. You are so frustrating. All right. Mass Phoenix here from FireEye, which again, very viable strategy in team games. Extremely hard to deal with. I like that Nira Vro. I can't say his name. We're going to call him Nira. Nira is uh, working on Mass Liberator, which a combination pretty good, although neither of them can hurt buildings, which is a bit of a flaw in that composition. Real good at killing stuff, though. So that's nice. So this space from Sulfurus is toast. His initial attempt to get stuff going on the other side of the map did not work out for him at all because, again, surprise wall. So I, I just have a lot of questions about Sulfurus's choices here today. Basically, the Phoenix. Oh, the probes pulling back to where the cannons are, and the Phoenix are like, we're going to kill you anyway. They kill a whole bunch of you. Lose a few of us. But overall, worth it. This is what I'm talking about. Casamigos has the spores. He knows he's dealing with mass Phoenix. This is not one or two or three or four Phoenix. This is all Phoenix all the time. Although the production tab for Fire Eye is empty right now, so I'm not sure what he's planning on doing. Check it out though, Battle Cruisers. If you're playing a team game, there's about a 70% chance the Terran player involved is gonna go Battle Cruisers. It just is. Again, another thing that's really good at the lower levels that isn't as good at the higher levels is Mass BC. Thor drop from Marine, wiping out Sophurus' little foothold at the front line here. Uh, or Series Star has no turrets. And as a result, loses most of his SCVs. Uh, I don't know that Liberator versus PC is exactly what you want to be doing here, guys. Uh, you almost have killed one of the battle cruisers after firing at it for the last three minutes. All of you at the same time. Uh, no, this is a so terrible choice, Nira. 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 Tactical jump. Tact. More Liberators showed up. Tactical jump. He's going to lose a battle cruiser. Okay. Uh, 
I'm not even entirely sure that everybody here is diamond. Like, even diamond players know to jump away with their battle cruiser if they're getting murdered. And you have a tactical jump available, which they both did before they died. Look at this guy, though. Five kills, uh, six kills on those BCs. Not too shabby. That's 11 liberators down for, like, a battle cruiser. I'm not sure how the math adds up, actually. Hey, at 10 minutes, it's time for a Nidus from Casa Amigos. Casa Amigos. Sounds like a Mexican restaurant. I kind of want to eat at Casa Amigos. I wonder if there is a restaurant called Casa Amigos. Well, the Lurkers are doing some work here against Xeno Race, who again is not actually around to defend himself at all. Uh, dude, Fire Eye has no defense back home. None. All his probes are going to get massacred. This Nidus is coming up too. The good news is, I'm not sure these Lurkers. These Lurkers are not getting home. These ones are, though, because there's another Nidus to run out to. You know what's pretty decent against Thor's is a lot of Lurkers. And the Lurkers get out. Gravitate the lurkers! No, say the lurkers. We're going back in our Nidus form where we're hiding. Zealous going after Marines, a planetary. No, you scanned, but they're already back in the Nidus form, guys. It's cool. You don't have to scan there anymore. Uh, that Nidus form is still here from Casamigos, though. Man, now I want good Mexican food. I'm gonna look it up while we're playing this game. How's that sound? Casa Amigos. Hey, it's an option. Uh, Casa Amigos. Apparently it's booze? Oh, it's tequila. <laughs> A tequila. Co-founded in 2013. Oh. Then it was... Pff, it's worth like $700 million as a brand. Cool. That shows you how much I drink. The answer is zero. So Casa Amigos, tequila. We learned something today. You clicked on this cast and we learned something together. Of course, you might have already known what Casamigos was. Anyway, the trick for dealing with the Nidus Worming player, it's really annoying, but you have to be on top of their Nidus Worms. If you can kill them before they pop over and over again, the Zerg player is not going to get anything done. They'll be frustrated. They're going to be stuck with a lot of units that aren't doing anything. And then you all walk across the map and murder stuff and you win. Yeah, I'm liking this from Nira. He's setting up on these things before... I mean, there's like other worms. Yes, obviously we're pinging those. Two battle cruisers on the way for more Siri Star. Another Nidus comes up. Ah, didn't catch this one. He just gets a couple spines off and then back into the Nidus worm and doesn't have to lose anything. It's nice, is what it is. Dude, what's our Thor count at? It's up 15? Jeez, with three more on the way from Marine. Marine says, I wish I had afterburners. What the? What's after? What? Like, do Thors get afterburners? Do Liberators get afterburners? I don't think so. I think he's just wishing. He's wishing there was an upgrade available for Thors to make them fast because they are slow, but that means they hit hard. Casamigos does have a couple changelings coming in to see what's up, and he sees a million Thors heading to murder everything. Says, how many uh, immortals do we have? Should we find out real quick? How many immortals does Team Blue have? 14, oh my gosh. Okay, 14 immortals, gonna do all right here. Although the lifting experience and the liberators together, the battle cruisers. The Thors are so good against big time air units like battle cruisers, though. That single target attack. Ba bam, ba bam. Big time hits. Crush, crush, crush. Thor's trying to get out of or drones trying to get out of here, but that's not gonna work out for them at all. The Phoenix are fighting the again, Phoenix Liberator versus Battle Cruiser. You're gonna tickle them to death. You'll get there eventually, but it's just not cost efficient. Another night is coming up back home. Casamigos is like, well, if they're on the other side of the map, I'm just gonna murder them back in their home. Which seems to make sense. The Thors can't engage with the... Or the Immortals can't engage with the Thors because there's a billion Liberators here. Phoenix taking down another battle cruiser. Another Nidus comes up from Casamigos. Is there anything in it? Yes, there certainly is. There certainly are some uh, some Lurkers in there. Another Nidus is coming up for Casamigos. He got a Changeling all the way in here to give him that vision. That's so cool. 
Lurker's popping out. Running directly into Liberator fire, though. Trying to get out of the Liberator fire. The Thors are continuing to wander across the map ponderously as they do. Zealot attack from Sulfurus. Does he... What does he... Do? I, don't, I don't understand what he's doing. But he's got a lot of Zealots. So that's fun. Mass Zealot was a lot better when they had that charge damage they did on impact. That was taken away, though, a while ago. Uh, the Thors need to go, but the problem is the Immortals are faster. So you kind of have to engage here, and that is just... Ow, ow, ow. Ow. Thor is taking serious hits. The Zealot's just kind of running around from place to place trying to accomplish stuff. Which works out. The single Lurker with five kills is trying to take down Xeno Race's single Nexus. Lurker's getting into Fire Eyes base to kill the remainder. Oh, maybe get these ones and these ones at the same time. Not a bad idea. We're heading home, though. Marine is. I think you can probably kill this base with your three Thors, but I guess going home is fine, too. Yeah, Lurker's all split up. Dude, Mass Liberator and Mass Phoenix on the same, same team is kind of amazing. And the Thors are gone to Protoss. Just goes to show, man. Mass Zealot and Immortals crush Thors. It's not even close. It's amazing how good Thors are against Zerg and how bad they are against Protoss. Hey, look. There's still some Thors here to handle the remaining Lurkers that are over here. The one, I guess. Phoenix Ball's like, hey, Zealot group. We do bonus damage versus light. What's up? Also, free battle cruiser from Osiris Star. Nira's maxed out on Liberators, which I think is kind of amazing. I guess Liberators and the Thors are his too, yeah? No, those are Marines. Marines at 141. That's right. Fire Eyes at 57 supply for Phoenix, which doesn't seem super great, actually. Yeah, every Immortal you can kill is a major victory. Warp Prisms that go down is nice. Oh, 1 HP! 1 HP on that thing. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, that's a planetary down. Them zealots getting the job done. Phoenix just really killing workers at this point. <laughs> yeah, man, this is all Nira for all. Nira has um 43 liberators. Repair the orbital. It's really important this orbital not die. I don't think they're saving it though, unless. Repair was pretty good, and how many Liberators are there now? Again, 40 of them. Okay, it turns out 40 Liberators, actually not bad against a couple battle cruisers. Especially if they're kind of stacked up and the splash damage is engaging here. Zealots from Sulfurus catching up to these tanks from, or the Thors from Marine. Not enough Zealots that time, though. We're going to go ahead and get rid of these weird cannons that Sulfurus has set up over here for no reason. Zalia's expanded to the bottom right for reasons unknown. Uh, Xena Race gonna lose their final nexus of the game. This is turning into a bit of a closer match. What are the upgrades like? Well, let's see. Marine has a uh, 3 3. Awesome. Plus 3 attack for the Liberators, plus 3 attack for the Phoenix, too. So that's not bad. Those are good upgrades. Team Blue is at plus 2 attack for ground. Plus three attack for ground. Uh, one, one for the battle cruisers, which a serious star, not a great player, it turns out. And the Zerg player has no attack or armor upgrades for anything, which seems like a problem. So if Team Blue loses this thing, it's because upgrades, man. You need them upgrades if you're going to win. Even if you're four versus three, you can't neglect upgrades at all. Yeah, but if you're just, I mean, Mass Cannon, Mass Spore seems really good in the age where your opponents are going Liberator Phoenix. And then you just have to worry about the Thors, which at that point, again, just uh, whatever, a bunch of Zealots, a bunch of Immortals, call it a day. This base is ripe for the murdering. How do you not have any static defense, Osiris Star? You know what's happening. You know what your opponents are doing. 
Oh, look at these Phoenix. They're like, uh... We'll let the Liberators handle this base. You're the only one that can kill buildings. It's true. Are these... Is he gonna... Is Osiris Star even gonna run? No. Osiris Star might be the least valuable player in this game. Just gonna say... Just gonna say that. It's... Maybe it's mean, but it's true. I don't think I've ever seen a worse Battlecruiser player in my life in team games. Ah, look at this. The combined power of Phoenix Liberator and that Battlecruiser dies at about half a second. These Battlecruisers are doing all right. We're killing all their units, says FireEye. We just need to kill their bases now. Another Battlecruiser down. How many? But seriously though, 22 Battlecruisers have died. Look at this Battlecruiser engaging with like four HP instead of running. If you're gonna mass battle cruiser, please at least figure out how on earth you jump. Tactical jumping is like skill number one for battle cruiser players. Thor's please attack, says Nera. They just have mass spore. We got this thing. How many immortals exist? 31 though. Oh my gosh, these immortals though, coming in weird places. Oh, the Thors. I don't know, man. I don't know about leaving the safety of anything. Look at these dudes. Bruh. Bruh. Shame our carrier player left. You're not wrong, Nira. Oh, that's what... Oh, Zeta Race was carriers. All right. <laughs> what a great mod about all this is. Thors. Could you, could you, could you... I mean, what's funny is this could actually be a real 4v4 because massing Thors, massing Liberators, and massing Phoenix are things people totally do. Lurker, Nidus is something they totally do too. Mass Immortal, again, just in response to mass Thor. You don't go mass Immortal normally, but in this situation, you're fine. You just need to come up the ramp, guys. Let everybody fire. Nervo's gonna wipe out Zalia's base, which Zalia's had for some time. This feels like a bit of a GG blow economically. That said, man, Osiris Star has a bunch of bases. So, like, Osiris Star's macro is good. I just question Osiris Star's everything else, basically. And I guess, fine. If. They chose Battle Cruiser in response to what the opponent was doing. So maybe Osiris Star is not great with Battle Cruisers, but it was kind of forced into that role based on how things went, right? Yeah. Reasonable. Reasonable point. Hey, look, the Thors are up here. There's a few immortals, but the Phoenix are true to their word and taking care of the Thors, so the taking care of the immortals so the Thors don't have to. I don't know why I get Thor and Immortal confused. Oh, these guys are bad rallying. Oh, the bad rally. Rest in peace, bad rally units. That happens to the best of us, I believe. Okay, not the best of us. But it happens to everybody who's watching, I can tell you that much. From time to time. Uh, okay. So a bunch of mortals just died to the billion liberators that exist. Marine says, I need gas. Dude, you've got 124 supply. You have more supply than anybody else. So Furious leaves the game. GG. Zalia calls the GG. I assumed Osiris Star would follow, but if Osiris Star wins this thing with like mass battle cruiser somehow, I'll be super impressed. The seven BCs are out, sitting on eight thousand to three thousand resources. That's like ten more battle cruisers, man. Use your star ports, but they need tech labs first. That's maybe that's your problem. You forgot about tech labs. 
he's not not producing anything. Oh gosh. All right. Well, uh, I uh, the upgrade advantage here is pretty pronounced. You ever wanted to see Mass Liberator kill Mass Battlecruiser? Well, this is your chance. How often do you see that happen in StarCraft, huh? Thor's getting called down to repair, which makes a lot of sense considering... Oh my gosh, mules. I have Thors on my mind, guys. I'm calling everything Thors in this cast. And I guess the Mass Thor just has me... Has me thinking about Thors, yo. Dude, is this Thor going to die to Broodlings? <laughs> that Thor died to broodlings. <laughs> Thor guy, what do you need? Gas. It's true. It's very true. Somebody dump some gas on him. Jeez. I guess no one on Team Red has any gas, though. I guess Fire Eye just dumped all of his out, so that's fair. Uh, Osiris Star is making six battle cruisers at a time. I don't know that it would have mattered if they would have had them earlier, but it would have been nicer regardless. So, Sierra Star is holding on. Uh, I think Casa Amigos is holding on too. Somehow, I guess he has um, this base. That's cool. Nidus Worms. I heard one erupt somewhere. I don't know where it was. Sierra Star's Fusion Core. Did that get wiped out? I think it got wiped out. Zero Star, where's your oh, fusion core is gone? All right, so these battle cruisers are all that Osiris Star can make. Thor's just chomping everything to death here. Bunch of cannons out for Sulfurus. Sulfurus is gone. I'm not sure how much that matters. I like this barrier of defender mode circles that are getting set up here. Unload your Thors over here. Again, upgrade advantage is a big deal right now. The Lurker getting some free shots off, though. I kind of like the Lurker sneaking in. There's your scan, however. And the Lurkers getting one shot blasted by the remainder of these stores. They just have so much HP. Does repairing cost gas? Yes, Fire Eye, it does. If you're repairing a unit that needed gas to get repaired, then it requires gas. Casa Amigos coming up for what feels like one last hurrah. Does kill one of the Thors and a couple of the mules there. A pick up and a retreat here from Marine Duty. A motto on one of those medevacs carrying the Thors would be insane. The unload! I think we lost, says Fire Eye. I don't know, man. Your economy is pretty garbage. No one has any resources to speak of. Fire Eye has a ton. Everybody has a ton of minerals, but nobody has any gas. On the other side, Osiris Star has 16,000 minerals and 3,700 gas. Expand? Says Marine. Uh, yes. Like, here would be great. Here would be good, too. There are places to expand. This is a huge map. Replacement Fusion Core coming in from Osiris Star. They have cannons everywhere. I mean, generally true. Oh, my million lurkers. It's a trap! It's a trap! Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. Oh my gosh. That was so many dead Thors right there. There are two remaining for Marine's army. The Immortals are here too. Dude, it's... Um, Team Red has 1,102, 0, and 97 supply. That said, Team Blue has had two of their players leave, Zalia and Sulfurus. So... It's 135 and 68 supply. Casamigos is doing all right. I'm not sure that Casa Amigos has been, like, maxed out at any point in this game, but sometimes that's what happens in team matchups. The Lurkers are on this side of the map. Again, quick as a wink. 
because that's what Nidus will do for you. Yoink, 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 yoink. Mortals from Zalia heading on up. Moving on up to the lift off. You're lifted off, man. Lift it off, man. I might send this replay into a YouTuber. You're not wrong, Fire. I, that happened. <laughs> and it's getting cast. Incredible. Incredible stuff, dude. I'm going to take out the cannons, says Marine. So we can expand in places. Do they, they know about this, right? We've the hive cluster is under attack. Yes. Team Red knows about those bases on the left side. They've just done nothing to harm them at all today. Like, fly the Thors around the backside, land them here, and everything dies. This isn't even a planetary for a series star. It's going to be a tight finish, though, whatever happens here. I mean, these... For as many criticisms as I have for Casa Amigos, he's doing all right. The mule repair here is great against these cannons. But the lurkers are a bigger problem, it turns out. Uh, lurkers. Deirdrit. Deirdrit. Don't engage. You can't repair through the G -G. damage. Nira taps out. G -G. Fire Eye taps out. Wait. He just said GG. Are there just lurkers everywhere? It's just the income. Like, this is the base. Marine's gone. Yeah, that's it, man. Fire Eye leaves the game in 31 minutes and 41 seconds. And Team Blue fights extraordinarily hard. Despite the fact that they were up um, four players to three, right? Like, that should have... It's got a little bit easier for them, but sometimes at the lower levels, there can be some struggles, especially when it comes to mono battles. Because you're kind of stuck with whatever you chose, you know? So, obviously, Osiris Star, despite the fact that um, there were some major flaws in their game, and despite the fact that Sulfurus isn't quite sure what they were doing, um, I'd say Casamigos kind of carried here a little bit. Just constant lurker attacks, constant lurker drops everywhere. Really decent answer to the Thor. It's not an incredible answer, especially if you don't have any Vipers. Although Sulfurus's cannons did cause some problems, right? They caused some problems for Team Red and allowing them to expand where they wanted to, which is essentially why Team Red lost the game, is because they were starved. They were starved out. So nice job, Fire Eye, sending us a replay where you lost. Not a lot of people would do that, so hats off to you. Appreciate you doing that. More people need to send in losses just for, I don't know, just to try to learn and... Try to be awesome. So Sirius are lost 40 battle cruisers and had one at the end of the game and won the match. Zalia, actually, is Zalia Zalia's our immortal player? Alright, Zalia was okay. Zalia had 11 immortals at the end of the game, lost 61. Good grief. Resources lost here. 43,000. Like Team Blue lost just so many units. More than Team Red, but they just also had more bases. And economically, that's how this thing works. I really think these bases helped win the day. This was a base that helped win the day. These bases down the right side. Team Red was backed into this corner the entire game. Barely managed to get this one. Never even took these ones, which are like theirs to take. You know, I guess this base and this base were taken at some point. But yeah, I mean, losing, just being a player down, especially, is so hard to come back from. So, good stuff, but uh, that's going to be it from me today. So, this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Two: Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.